All right, so we are live. <laughs> Gotta get that last of us we team. No, we're not live yet. Technically. Live right there. Live yet. Technically. Live right there. Live yet. Now we are. You on the wrong one? No, I'm on the one that's a. Uh, there it goes. So there's still gonna be another one that that'll pop up because you haven't removed it. What? No, what no, did no, you no. just say? There's still an old one in the list. There's still an old one in the list that's that's gonna trigger for eight eight thirty or what whatever. No, they're not. Oh yeah. I deleted it. Oh, uh, you just deleted it. Well, no, I was I still on. I deleted it I was, forty minutes. Ago. No, I was still on the page. I deleted it forty minutes ago. All right. Okay. Oh, but whose phone's on? Jacob's. And your volume somewhere. All right. So let's get this going. I'm going to copy that. Yeah, we're the only two people on this right now. And we are nice. And we are live. All right. So we are live now. And uh, basically, um, if you watched our promo, we did a promo video. And if you watched our promo video, you saw that we went long box diving yesterday um, at the flea market. And we picked up some stuff. And some. I got a whole table of stuff over here that we picked up. And uh, we just wanted to do a live stream and share it with you and show you some of the finds we have because we're kind of excited about it and the things that we picked up. Some of them are definitely key issues for me. Um, I think yeah, some key issues for him. Uh, I don't think he got anything. Even no. though he did some digging, I think he just picked up for me. Um, oh, yeah. Cause he, just a workhorse. He picks things out for me because he is such a great son, and I really appreciate him. Now – all this stuff here, some some of it I have. There are key issues. Some of it is just kind of stuff I got because I saw a name of an artist or the, uh, the name of a uh, writer. And eh, some of it, I just it's going to be sitting on a shelf or something like that. Um, so if you happen to see anything that you like, email email us, um, you know, DM us, whatever, and uh, maybe we can work something out. We don't care, but uh, we definitely like to share the wealth. Um, so. What we're going to do is we're going to start going through some of this. Um, I was hoping to give a few minutes, see if anybody will join us. So we'll start in a five. minute. It's yeah. about 5 o'clock now. So uh, we came in a little early, make sure our sound's working. Hopefully everybody can hear us. Um, <laughs> I think the only watchers we have at the moment are oh, ourselves, so. and we can hear ourselves just fine. Right? You can hear me? I am not. Well, so we are long box diving. I am Jay. Or D. That's. I'm I'm Jay. Am You're I? Jay. I'm D. You're question? Jay. Who are you? Z. Z. That's E. No, uh, it's Z. 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 <laughs> Z. Z. And we are long box diving, and um, we like comic books. We like talking about comic books. Um, we you know specifically talk about a lot of the older stuff that we find. Um, we do a lot of comic cons, go a lot of comic divings, and just go into the long boxes and see what we can find. Um, yeah. Find key issues, but sometimes just to rescue comics um, from a drudgery of sitting in a box in a flea market for the rest of its life, or you know, just stuff that's shoved in a shoebox somewhere. Um, bring them back and bring them out, and let people see it for for the the greatness. Some of these things are the, the art and the writing um, somewhere fantastic, and you know, art my childhood, you know, kind of their childhood a little bit because kind of, I forced it on them, but yeah, they like it now, so that's good. So I guess we'll go ahead and get underway. Um, and we've got a lot of comics to show. And honestly, I don't know a lot of who the artists or writers are on some of these things. Um, I don't know what the stories are about. So some of this stuff will actually go into our list of things that we want to review um, right. on our channel. You know, I actually, in this stack over here, I have a six-issue arc of Daredevil that looks really good. And so one of the things I may be picking up to do a, a short mini review on it on our channel. So... As we review this, you know, some of the stuff we maybe talk about as doing the reviews, and some of it maybe just this is cool. So let's get started. All right. 
Do you want to show one first? Or no. You want me to go um, first? Yeah, go ahead. You have, you have the cool, cool stuff. Eye. I have the cool stuff. I always have the cool stuff. All right. It's late, lazy eye. Yeah, but just the comic. Okay, so E is back there reading a comic. From, from, from the last the page. <laughs> from the last page. Again. All right, so first. This is not manga. Um, something we picked up is Fantastic Four, um, issue 137. Man, I like the covers of this era. I don't know if you can see it that well. But I uh, like, you can. Yeah. I like the covers of this era. Yeah. These are fantastic. I mean, I can look at this and I can pretty much tell what's going to happen. We got Medusa, Johnny, the thing, all fighting this big monstrosity. There's Richard over there wrapping him up. That looks fantastic. Well, that um, like it's appealing to to me because it feels very much like an old sci science fiction movie poster. And yeah, it does. I like those. Hey, let's see how Deuce Helmet. Deuce Helmet looks freaky. It's got metal spikes poking out. Let's go. Right. So ben, uh, Reed bends down, and now the creeps after Medusa. That's fine. Here, where walks Warhead? But the names they gave villains. Warhead. War <laughs> Warhead. Pun. All right. So here, um, <laughs> that one blows. <laughs> we picked up another Fantastic Four. Issue 152. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but I believe that's the artist's signature. Rich Buckler. Uh, I believe that's the signature on that. Again, great covers. I love these covers. Um, man. All right. So we got, you know, Ben Grimm and, uh, you know, Medusa. Everybody's in a cage getting their powers trained. Fantastic. That's just splendid. All right, another Fantastic Four. In fact, we got a lot in this deck that are Fantastic Four. It's 153. Oh, yeah. Again, great cover. Um, Worlds in Collision. The Menace of Makazumo, the Nuclear Man. Wow, I actually got it. So now I've got a lot to read now. All right. So, you know, over the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks, probably with the stack of this, some of this stuff is going to be going on my Twitter page because. Um, I'll be showing off some of the stuff that we found. And just, hey, these are cool covers. I like the covers. They're, they're fantastic. All right. Fantastic Four, issue 154. Man, another, uh, you know, I always say another good cover. These are great. I really like the trade dress on these. And, and the I like knowing kind of a idea of what's going to go on in the comic, what's kind of happening, and uh, that kind of stuff. Hi, uh, Sean. So... I mean, every good cover has that. It's not the same art that's in the book, but it's everything that you need. Yep, everything's gonna what it's gonna need, and, and you can kind of see what's happening, what's going on, that kind of stuff, and, and it kind of tells what the story, what the story's about, what the story, what's happening in the story. I like that. All right, so another Fantastic Four issue one sixty two. Um, a <laughs> look at that. Two things, and you can see it right on the cover. And look, look at a bunch of guy, uh, army guys. Look at that. It's great. Ah, uh, Fantastic Four, issue 163. Uh, look, at, look at that, man. Is he like a, a guy playing on a hockey skis with a hockey stick? Is that, what, is, that, yes. is that what that looks like to you? Yeah, that is. That's what it looks like to me, too. Yeah. All right, so we got to, you know, what is this? Oh, his name is Guard. This is it, Sudden Death Showdown. That's great. It's a reference to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It might be. You never know. All right. Fantastic Four, issue 164. We have, it looks kind of like Quasar. Who is that? Uh, Marble Boy. No, Crusader. Kind of looks like Marvel Boy. He's got the the bands on. You see that? The nigga bands. But I guess it's called the Crusader. All right. And continuing with that story, Fantastic Four issue 165. We got him fighting the thing. The Crusader. Again, it looks like he's wearing the nigga bands. So it's kind of. Like, I wonder if it is the same bands that. That Quasar ends up wearing maybe uh, so. lot, lots of old school Thor and uh, 
Um, Fantastic Four artifacts. Yep. Fantastic Four, issue 167. Is this yet another thing versus the Hulk? Though, it looks like he's trying to punch uh, Susan Storm there. That's not good. The Hulk should not be hitting the girls. Mm. Tisk, tisk. Tisk. Though, I mean, she probably, she may have thrown the first punch. I don't know. All right, here we go. Fantastic Four, issue 168. What's Luke Cage? Luke Cage, look at that. And there's the thing is, uh, is the thing depowered? Is that what we're trying to? But now that I am, I've been, oh, so replaced by the Power Man. Did, did Luke Cage actually join the Fantastic Four? I don't, I don't know. Good name, but maybe. Well, if anybody's in the chat that happens to know, Shan Fana or Jacob, let us know. I am going to look it up. You gonna look it up for us? Yeah. yeah. I wonder. I wonder if he actually was ever part of that. All right. Fantastic Four issue one seventy three. You got them again. Fantastic Four against Galactus. I've all, I've always liked them fighting Galactus. You know, it, you know. I remember the uh, the the ones that the Ultimate Nullifier Man. There's some great stuff in here. All right. So Fantastic Four one seventy four. We've got the Fantastic Four fighting Torgo. Tor I've never the Titan. Oh, Titan! Nice. Yeah, Luke Cage was a member of the Fantastic Four while the Thing lost his powers. Wow, so nice. And here, look, look you got the High Evolutionary. Right. Now we got Fantastic Four issue one seventy six. That. An alien dude, Super Scroll, right? I don't know. Is it so Super Scroll? Old, old no, version. He's returned and he's more powerful than ever. The Impossible Man is back. The Impossible Man. The impossible Man. Nice. See, again, a cover that tells us what's going on in the comic. All right. Fantastic Four, issue one ninety one. FF resigned. Look at them walking away. That's great. The, Just a bunch of thieves. You notice the difference. Look at 30 cents, 35 cents, 30 cents, oh, wait a 25 cents. Prices started skyrocketing. All right. And then we have Fantastic Four issue uh, 208. And Look at, look at the Sphinx. Isn't he, or did he become Kang? The Conqueror? The Sphinx? The Sphinx. Is that uh, I don't think so. Alter Ego from back in the... Uh, I don't remember. Right. So the, that was the uh, that was the Fantastic Four. Some old Fantastic Four stuff I picked up. Great stuff. Ah, man, I love these stuff. And the, the covers are fantastic. Ethan, what are you? What are you doing, dude? You're messing everything up. Really. I had things in order. All right. I'm keeping it in order. All right, so let's go through this. No, Sphinx. Well, Sphinx is the, in, in Marvel lore, is the magician that uh, dulled Moses. What? Cool. All right. Dual Moses. Yeah, no, he's not king. Nice. All right. So we picked up uh, some Mighty Thor stuff. So we've got uh, some of this is newer. So Mighty Thor 455. Uh, Mighty Thor 462. That looks crazy. It looks like his hair is doing what Medusa does. Spaghetti. Um, this one's kind of messed up. 
Wolverine. What if Wolverine? I can't even see what it says because it's going to kind of drop oil or something on it. That's that. All right. The Adventures of Superman. And look at, look at somebody does this. Rips the back off these things. Just, uh, that bothered me. All right. So The Adventures of Superman. 512. It doesn't bother me. Take care of your stuff. All right. And this. And look at that. Conan. The Barbarian. The Barbarian. Issue 101 from 1979. Yeah. Great. Look at that. Good looking stuff. All right. Then Avengers West Coast, issue 100. Mephesto. Look at that. And then we got. Who that got one's hard to see. That is, the, see. that is hard to see on that cut. Look at that. You see, people are in his hand. I believe that. Is War Machine, um, the Wasp, and Wanda, and oh, Captain America. So that's cool. They did a couple of covers during that time period. Not sure um, why, it, but yeah, they did a, a, a lot of different covers like this. They did one with the Vision. Um, so and we have Excalibur. Excalibur. 96. Uh, Punisher plus Cage, issue sixty. So, was there a whole run that, that Cage joined the Punisher? So now we have him joining the Fantastic Four, and he joins the Punisher. That should have been the Netflix series. That should have been the Netflix. <laughs> been fantastic. All right, so Avengers West Coast got the annual. I um, remember that cover from yeah, somewhere. Atlantis attacks. I think I might have one of these. Yeah. This is the Circuit Crown, I believe, was when they went after the Circuit Crown. Um, then we have the Mighty Thor. Issue 453. Again, Mephisto. Mephisto. The Dazzle. Thor. Look at that. The Warriors 3. All right, now here's some stuff that I don't really know anything about. DuckTales. The ba the Beagle Boys, Woo. Scrooge McDuck. This is like the Gold Key. That's copyrighted. The gold Key's copyrighted. No, no, no. The, the theme song. Yeah, don't don't sing. Don't don't get us in trouble, man. So I don't know anything about these. Um, printed in 1974. Um, Walt Disney's publishing Western Publishing Company. So um, we got some Charlton comics. Okay. Pebbles and Batman. All right, so this is from 1975. Of course, it's kind of messed up on the cover, too. Again, more comics you got to kind of rescue a little bit. Save them from obscurity. All right, so we have The Living Mummy, number 10. Living Mummy, number 10. I have not read any of these that I remember. So this is going to be definitely one of those I'm going to have to read. Um, but we got him being shot by a tank. It's crazy. All right. Now we got the Tomb of Dracula, number 32. All right. The Battleground of Blood. You summon me here to slay me, Quincy Harker. Nice. All right. So here was the uh, here was the uh, arc I was telling you about. The arc is called The Fall from Grace. So here is Daredevil. Issue 350. Um, and I've got the whole storyline. Is I think that's Silver Sable. Uh, that looks like Sable. But... That's 1993. Alright, so we got that. And then, it, you know, Chapter 2, Daredevil, Issue 321. This is actually a cover with, like, that felt on it. Okay. You don't feel that? Oh. You ever feel one like that before? Yeah, you, you, you uh, not on a comic. <laughs> no, on something you draw on it. And it, you may, scrape it, it, and... it may just be scrapings. I actually felt maybe scrapings, but that's it's a got cool, some texture. Cool kind of covers. It definitely got a texture to it. And we got Daredevil Ch Fall from Grace Chapter Three, Number Three Twenty Two. Kind of covering his face. What else? I don't know. Who, I don't actually. Is that? Bullseye? And that's not bullseye. No. I don't know who that is. All 
Uh, I'm not going to read it right now. <laughs> but, uh, all right, then. <laughs> Woo! No, not a live stream without a sneeze. All right. So, chapter four. Look at this. Venom. Is Matt Murdock getting wrapped up in a Venom symbiote? Now, Maybe. That I would be the cover scared. could be misleading, though. The cover could be misleading, but that looks freaky. I'm not sure if that tongue's coming out of his throat or in. Yeah. Guest starring Venom. All right. Chapter five of that same is now this guy. I mean, look at this. Issue 354. Just a white cover with Daredevil on the ground. And that looks like a vampire. What's the name of that? Uh, Morbius? Uh, probably. And then the final issue of the story arc with... All right, so it's the final issue of the story arc. Daredevil 352, the Fall from Grace story arc, and it's got the the built-in, it's all stapled in, so I don't want to rip it out, but that big poster folded a couple times. It looks like it's Electra. That's cool. All right. Okay, the X-Men 306. Technovirus. Technovirus. Remember his name? Hodge? No, I think it's Hodge. Scott Lobdell, John Romita Jr. Yeah, he did a great art on this stuff. Technovirus. Yeah, I think it's Cameron Hodge. That's who that is. The Technovirus infects a lot of people, but so maybe we get lucky. Yep. War, uh, don't call me Warren Hodge. All right. So this one again. I hate. I hate. Bug me. All right. Poor, poor comics. So, X-Men Classic 101. Colossus battling Doom. Dun, dun, dun. Who, would, who would win? Oh, Colossus. Yeah, Doom. Easy. No, Colossus. Col Colossus got strength and invulnerability. Doom is just outclasses him in a brain. So he's just going to... Yeah. I mean, I mean if, he's even, if he's in... He defeated the Beyonder. If he's invulnerable. What we're, talking about, though. we're talking about a fist fight right there. Oh, a punching fight. Whatever. Okay, but no. In an actual fight, Doom, Doom's got it. All right, so X-Men Annual number two. Um, I don't remember who that is here. Um, but we got Gambit. We got Beast. We got Cyclops. Um, and I bet that is a Psylocke, right? Yeah. Looks like Psylocke. All right, so we're now we're back to another set of stuff that they're Harvey comics. Um, for 1973, Devil Kids, starring Hot Stuff. <laughs> Sounds bad, but I think it's okay. I don't know. He's wearing a diaper. That could be okay. That could not be okay. Can't, it can't be that bad. I don't know. It can't be you two kids. Hot Stuff Sizzler. Again, a little devil that looks like he's got a cold, so he's got to pour fire into his mouth. Um, then we sense. have Tomb Raider and Witchblade. Um, top cow. Then we got oh, Superman. Uh, this is in a sealed envelope. Um, Superman. Issue, what, what issue was this? 500? Superman 500. Um, and I've got the, the black cover here. Um, and it still comes with the card, the card in the back. So it's all included together. So, yeah, that, that was cool. What right. was it, the two of Superman? Um, uh, not sure. Superman, all right. The, the, this one, I'm going to flash it quick. Close your eyes. Um, this is a DF. Dynamic Forces exclusive number 340, 3541. Um, it is the Dark Child Swimsuit Illustrated Edition. So, all right. Hopefully, uh, yeah. So, uh, it was in the box. I bought the box. I can't help it. All right. The Adventures of Superman, issue 501. Good old Superman comics. 
Superman, Man of Steel, issue 22. L. Simonson. Uh, that, that was, yeah. Louis Simonson. Two. All right. We got The Hulk 393, The Incredible Hulk 393, the 30th anniversary edition. That cover. It's got kind of that chromium cover, kind of. Very cool looking. Um, this is back from 1992. We got Al Milgram, Sal Schema. That's what it is. Um, Walt Simonson, Jim Starlin, Del Keown. A lot of good people in this book. It's great. What's that, bud? It's uh, Here Lies the Earth's Greatest Hero. Oh, for Superman? Yeah. The Death of Superman? Is that what that is? Uh, uh, Superman number 75. All right, so I picked this. I got this too in that box. Uh, Young Blood number one, Lee Phil. Look at that. Yeah, that is very nice. So I remember reading this when it first come, came out. Um, 1993. I remember reading this when it first came out. Oh. I went and got it. It was fantastic. Danny Miki was on the inks. Um, some good stuff in here. So, yeah, this is actually, um, I think this was actually the Battle Zone. So, Youngblood Battle Zone number one. So, it's got a lot of, uh, it's like a Youngblood information. So, let's see, like, it's a combat armor. Stuff like that in there. So it's not the comic itself. It's a battle zone. It's like the uh, who's who of DC or the uh, Marvel Universe updates. Um, you know, a Hulk reprint. Uh, the Adventures of Superman. Again, we got another one of those. Number 507. Not the best. It's a little worn. But, um, Trinity. Number three. And that's Wonder Woman on the cover. Um, Ghost Rider, twenty ninety nine versus uh, number twenty one. Look at that. Now I like old school old Ghost Rider probably a little better than this twenty ninety nine version of Ghost Rider. This came out what nineteen uh, ninety six. The Adventures of Superman number sixteen, based on the animated series. Um, not not a big fan of the cartoony look on that, but it was an animated series. Superman, The Adventures of Superman, number five hundred nine. That's very cool looking. Hey, I mean, Clark Kent had long hair. Yeah. Superman used to have long hair. Oh, fit the times, right? What what year was that? <laughs> well, uh, I would imagine like the nineties. 1994. I want to see Superman with a mullet. G.I. Joe. A real American hero. Number 14. Hero. Destro attacks. All right. So here, this was an interesting one. And uh, I had to actually kind of look it up. The Real Heroes Pizza Hut exclusive. <laughs> yeah. And with the card. So I got the card in there. Spider-Man, Iron Man, Firestore, Human Torch. Um, anyway. It's unopened. And it's unopened. Tom Morgan, 1994. Huh. All right. Then we had... For the Pizza Hut collectors. A bunch oh, yeah. of, for the Pizza Hut collectors. I think it was like a... <laughs> I think there was only four different ones that were made available. All right. Marvel Selects, number one. I, I don't really know about these, but they seem to be kind of reprint stuff. Marvel Selects number two, the Fantastic Four. Read a book. Marvel Selects number three, Fantastic Four. Marvel Selects Spider Man number two. Marvel Selects Spider Man number three. There's no number so. one. No, no number one. Sorry. Oh, wheel. And then um, I was kind of, I, I like some old action comics. We got this one um, while we were there. Action Comics 436. Um, featuring the Green Arrow. I, I like some of these old Superman stuff. Look, Perry White's going to fly up and save that airplane. Oh, 
Totally. Totally. I think you can do it. I think you can. All right. So let's move on to the next set. Does anybody have any questions on what we found? Want me to open something up? Show you something? Let me know. All right. Uh. All right. So this deck has some of the stuff that I definitely picked up that has some key issues for me specifically. Um, but I did pick up some stuff. Um, and when I'm comic diving, I like to pick up stuff for people I know. And my daughter loves Birds of Prey. Uh, so I picked up a couple things of Birds of Prey for. And as I picked it up, I realized it was written by Chuck Dixon. So um, I thought that was really cool. Birds of Prey, Gorilla Grodd. And look at, you know, look at that. Look at right down there. Chuck Dixon. So as soon as we're done here, she is going to get these. Um, I told her I had to show, show it off on my live stream first, and then she'd get to have it. I wouldn't be surprised if she bust in the door right now to try to take it. That could happen. Might happen. All right. And then I got this one too, Birds of Prey number 24. Again, you can see Chuck Dixon there. Um, that dude. How did he get on the Birds of Prey? That's true. Hey, why is Death Rock on the Birds of Prey? <coughs> He's fighting him. All right. Then we got Marvel 2 in 1. Oh, because Deathstroke's Robin. Deathstroke's Robin. The, the Thing and the She Hulk. All right. So this is issue um, number 88, I believe. And She Hulk's making a comeback, kind of. I think they're going to restart a comic with her. Yep. Yeah. And she is fantastic. And look at that's her car. <sighs> she's, she's driving a, a pink. Is that a pink caddy? With the, the wings on the back? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, right. not, I'm not a car guy. I'm not a car guy. I don't like, I'm a comic guy. All right, so what issue, What year was this printed? 1982. So we had uh, David Anthony Kraft, um, Alan Edward Cooperberg. So... Okay. Yeah, it looks kind of a, like a caddy. Yeah, so here. I guess that's kind of a caddy-ish thing, right? Pretty cool looking, whatever it is. All right. Oh, what a great comic. All right. So now we've got Marvel's Greatest Comics, issue 70. Um, the Fantastic Four is in this one. Um, not, uh, fighting something with tentacles and crystals. Are, look at that. Another member of the Fantastic Four. Another member of the Fantastic Four, Mickey F5. Not so. Hmm. Oh, it looks like a house is eating them. Can you guess the surprise? Super villain. All right. Then we have Mighty Thor, number 298. Man, look at that. Thor fighting a dragon, monster, dinosaur thing that breathes fire. Look at He's actually using a sword and a shield in that. Classic dragon slaying weapon? Cra classic dragon. You know, not Majornor. Say that. Mjolnir. Maybe, yeah. He is my, say it again. I can't Mjolnir. Mjolnir. That one. He's not using the hammer. But he is definitely fighting a dragon. 1980. I think he's very impressive that the dragon can both breathe out of its mouth and nose. It's magic. Yeah, that is fantastic. Yeah, it, it adds, it adds, you know, it, it adds something to it. The, the snort there. You know, it makes it more dynamic. There's, there's more... A lot of action on There's that cover. More going on. All right, more going. Exactly. The amazing, amazing ventures of the original X Men. Um, the mutant threat Unis. I think he had like a bubble where nothing could touch him, and but it actually ended up killing him because nothing could enter it. That looks like, like air. Stretch Armstrong. Um, so they actually had to knock him out to get the bubble. I think that's what I remember. It's, it's been a long time since I've read it, but. No. Number 14, 1980, the 80s, man. All right. Justice League of America. I'm 
for 233. We got Vibe. Vibe. He's going to shake things up. Yeah, he's he's super cool. He is super cool. Look at them glasses. Yeah, they're, they will be groundbreaking. He is definitely in his ascot. <laughs> <laughs> he is dressed for success. Justice League of America. We got number 241, Amazo. Look at that. Amazo. So Vibe is there. Hold on. Who, who is... Who's up in this corner? Is that, oh, I think that's a Vixen. And is that Santana? Right, hold on. All right, so now I've got, I've got to figure this out. So, all right, so we've got, I think that's Santana, right? Um, Captain Steel, John John. I don't remember her name. I don't know his name. Vibe, and I think that's Vixen. So if anybody can tell me who these two are, um, yeah, I don't know. So let me know. I don't, yeah, I don't remember. I don't know if he's even part of the team. Remember, there's just people that are saving. I don't, I don't know. All right. Uh, or they could be on this next cover. And I just figured it out myself. So <laughs> issue 242. Um, she's Gypsy. And his name, I think he is Dale Gunn. And I have no idea what their powers are or what they do. But look at Aquaman, Mira are very happy. And Amazo is not very happy. All right. So Ralph and Sue, Santana, Vixen. Oh, right. That was Vixen 5 and Steel. Um, Justice League of America. Issue 243, look at, he wasn't happy. He busted up the little wedding party thing they were having, and they are going to save the day. That's right, because he has the powers of the Justice League, and they can beat him. All right. You know why? Why is that? Because water beats electronics. Okay. <laughs> That's is, shocking. This is why we try to write his jokes ahead of time. Dad jokes, and he's not even a dad. All right, uh, Wolverine, issue number 42, Lady Deathstrike, Sabretooth, and who's that? Somebody know? Werewolf. A werewolf. Thanks, that. No. E. Werewolf. His name is The Hunter in the Darkness. Feature Sabretooth, Lady Deathstrike, and The Hunter in the Darkness. Yep, that's uh, a werewolf name. Is that, the, is that a werewolf? Really? Sweet. No. I'm so glad you're here, man. You are just a font. Oh, yeah. Werewolf knowledge. Of werewolf knowledge. Lycanthropy. Lycanthropy. You are good at lycanthropy. All right. So now we've got an X-Men annual. Um, so, and, and here, is that the Amazing Man again? Wasn't he just fighting the Fantastic Four? Is that the same dude? All right, so we got Rogue, Wolverine, Cyclops. I think that is uh, Shadowcat, Colossus, Storm, and Nightcrawler. 1983, the X-Men Annual. Very nice. Yeah. All right, now we got X-Men number 181. Now, is that, is that Professor X? Okay. What is he doing? Is, it, is that how guys stood back in? Against an ex that's not. Against an ex, like, hey, how you doing? Professor X had some game. That's what that tells me. Yeah, when you but can stand. <laughs> look at what Colossus is doing. <laughs> I just see a Costanza photo. Do you remember, remember making the Costanza photo? Church Costanza? Yeah, he did the whole, he was laying on the couch. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on before we go down that rabbit hole. All right, so X Men number two fourteen, and see, this is probably one of my favorite trade dresses right here. How they did this with the the heads of the members, I just kind of like that. Who is the team that's going to be in this book? Now I don't know who this is. 
a storm looks like she's beating the tar out of her. What issue is that? This is issue 214. Yeah. All right, let's let's open this joker up. Valerie. Valerie? Let me look her up. Yeah, the un- Malice. It's Malice, because Allison Blair is also in this. That character's name is Malice. I'm not sure. I don't remember, remember the name Malice. I just can't place it to anything right now. Is Claremont right on this? We're going to find out. Uh, huh. One of those that doesn't tell us. Oh, how wonderful. It's like, geez, thanks, guys. Uh, I want to credit you, but I don't know. I can't. All right. Then we have Uncanny X Men, um, issue two eighteen. Um, I think this is the Claremont era. Oh, that's Dazzler taking. That's Daz- Dazzler's body, but Malice controlling. Him. Malice controlling it. Okay. Yeah. Um, here we go. X Men two fourteen. Um, we've got Dazzler, Psylocke, Rogue, and. God saying it's not Shadow Star, it's uh ah, t- totally long shot. There we go. Long shot. All right. And so I believe this is the Chris Claremont era here. Um I do not know why we have to tape these things. Oh. If it's earlier than um uh, executioner's song, then it probably is. All right, so this is I believe, yeah, Chris Claremont with Mark Silvestri doing the art on this. And this, I believe, is the Australian Outback when they've appeared to be dead and they're living out in Australia. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great cover. All right, so now Sylvester did some good art. I, Sylvester's art, John Ramada. Um, yeah, I like this stuff. All right, so we have the Uncanny X Men. Um, 259. We had Colossus taking on a bunch of people. Unarmored. He got brave. Uncanny X Men. <laughs> Regenesis, number two. We kill him. And uh, Patico. The art was pretty good in these. Um, I don't remember the story so much. I have to get. Because I was kind of ducked out of comics for a while, and this is the era I kind of missed. Um, so I've got to get back into reading these. That looks like Mr. Sinister. Um, Uncanny X Men number three, Regenesis. Um, again, Gilliam, um, Chico. But that looks like Wolverine under the thumb of a celestial shooting it with his eye beams. Does that make sense to anybody other than does that? Is that what you, what you Wolverine said? doesn't have eye beams? Not Wolverine, so- Cyclops. <laughs> that didn't make well, sense to anybody. That made no sense to anybody. <laughs> uh, I'm sure glad you guys are here. Always keep, keep, keeping you somewhat correctly. Nice that they helped me before. All right. Uncanny like X Men. Not before. Bendis. Um, I have, again, one of the ones I haven't really read. Uh, JLA. JLA. I like me some JLA stuff, number three. So Grant Morrison, Howard Porter, the art in these were fantastic. The writing was great. Um, <coughs> I read some of the older stuff. I haven't read the or some of the later stuff, not this stuff here. Again, JLA number four. JLA number five. Um, I'm not sure I was a super fan of this uh, Superman blue dude. I don't know if anybody else was, but, and I know almost, I think it's steel and, you know, plastic. Other than that, I don't know anybody else on this cover by sight. But Morrison, our reporter. It's probably why they 52 it. Number six. 
Uh, jelly number seven. So that's a great looking cover to that fire sword. Is that Azrael? Uh, probably Zuriel or something. Or Zuriel. That's what I meant. Zuriel. Rage of Angels. Man. Probably Zuriel. All right. JLA number eight. The Justice League under lock and key, except for the Green Arrow. <laughs> Look at that. Justice League looking like keys. Look at Batman. Batman is the key. Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and Flash. Where is everybody else? I don't know. And who's the dude in the background? I need to read this. The dude in the background is the janitor. The, ja um. the janitor. Defeated the Justice League. That's his <laughs> villain name. Uh, the JLA. Number 10. Rock of Ages. Part 1 of 6. See, now I, I recognize. The, now what, wait a minute. Why are they all smiling like that? Listen, if you walked up and saw Batman looking like that. That would be creepy. That's creepy. It's like the Joker Batman. The, the Batman it's like the Batman who laughs. Who laughs. <laughs> what is he doing here? And look at Superman. And look at Wonder Woman. It's all super creepy. What the crap Flash is not, going on here? Why is Flash not smiling? Flash is not smiling. He's, he, huh. he, he's the only one that wasn't participating in the group photo. And now, <laughs> if we move on to the next issue... You now know why they're smiling. Mwahaha. -ha. It's a Joker issue. All right, number 11. We got the Joker, and they look like everybody's in mazes. That's very cool. JLA, number 12. Um, that's a lot of big feet. You saw foot and sand, you know, some feet and sandal that size. All right. Rock of Ages 14. We went from the Joker and like Luther, Lex Luthor to Dark Side. Are those are those parademons. Looks like it. And then we're back, we're back to Lex Luthor and the Joker, number fifteen. Now, serious question: Do you see who Batman's holding back? John, John. Do you think he I really could? Man. No, he's a human. There's no way. Superman and John John. That's like one of those fake fights. Like, hold me back. Hold me back. Get it on camera. Come on. All right. Stormwatch. Now, this was the, the relaunch in the new 52 Stormwatch. Um, these were pretty, they weren't, as, honestly, to me, they weren't as good as the original, but I have some of the later issues, so I wanted to go ahead and fill it out. Um, Number one, we got Apollo, Midnighter, John John. Number three, number six, Stormwatch number six. Some cool stuff in here. I, I mean, it has some cool, interesting ideas. I mean, Hawksmore um, with the, the power of the city, Apollo with the power of the sun, Jenny, I mean, the, the power of the century. Some of the ideas in this book. And the original books were actually really pretty good, and I really enjoyed it. I don't know if anybody else did, but I did. Um, and, you know, honestly, probably one of the first gay couples I remember seeing in comics, um, Apollo and Midnighter. Did you know that? No, I, I haven't yeah. read so much. Apollo and uh, uh, Midnighter were in a relationship, and this was way I mean, early 2000s when I first remember reading. Well, the, the, been, there are a couple people earlier than that, but... I don't remember seeing it. I, I, I didn't read a lot, but other than, you know, Spider-Man and X-Men and Avengers. <laughs> um, so here's Stormwatch again. That thing looks creepy. And, and Apollo, Power of the Sun, but Midnighter had the power, power of, like, a probability deduction in within fighting. Um, so he can, you know... He can actually figure out what you're going to do before you do it. Kind of almost, almost like Taskmaster, yeah, sir, but less. But, but less. Not he can't copy your form, but he can know what you're going to do and they, therefore counter it before you do it. Um, it's very cool. And it's not telepathy; it's just uh, probabilities. So basically, what uh, any normal fighter is, but turned up to eleven. Turned up to eleven, and a, 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 you know, Midnighter against Batman. Oh, that'd be cool. With no preparation. Yeah. No preparation. 
I think it would have been a very interesting fight. So here's number 11. All right, so we're done with this stack. Well, I mean, it's Batman. He's only two more stacks already. <laughs> um, we're getting there, people. Thank you for hanging with us. Um, we really went overboard. Um, oh, yeah. And we probably have more than two stacks left. I, I did get a lot of comics because um, I have a sickness. I like comics. <laughs> it's uh, called shopping. It's called shopping. Spider Man 2099, Spider -Man 2099 number 18. Spider Man 2019, number 19. Not as cool. Not as cool? You don't think so? Not as lost as you know. And look look at the dude. That is a roller <laughs> blade. He's, he's on roller blade. Look at the helmet. It's like somebody was trying to be the master before the master. Roller blader. Uh, David. Peter David. Huh. I don't know why. Okay. Spider Man 2099, number 22, or 21. Cheapers is an advertisement for the Lion King in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, I like I like these kind of covers. Yeah, a little bit of a glint to it, a little bit of a glare, and then got the little uh, ridging in it. Spider Man 2099, number 25. They, they should have colors like Pokemon Power Store. Yeah. Some of them are actually back too. Um, not good. Cool. Not cool. All right. Ooh. Justice League, the new 52, number seven. Um, because it came in the box. Spoilers. But Gob Johns. It's it's not a it's not a bad one. It's pretty good. <clears throat> you're not we're, we're not getting, there yet. You're getting in? Always I'm, from the back. <sighs> always starting from the back. You won't start in order. All right. Ravage 2099, number uh, 16. All right. Who wrote these? I don't know. Interesting. Um Pat Mills, Grant Mion. Me Number 17. I mean, they're pretty good covers. That's a lot going on in that one, so I'm not not really sure about that one. But this one is pretty good. Number 18. Uh, number 19. Looks like somebody has him in a scope. And apparently they missed. Number 20. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That is a big gun to have a scope. What if that was the one with the, he had a scoped? Why would you even need a scope with a with a gun that big? Just blow everything away. Just everything in front of you. Just blow. all right. So Ravage number twenty four. All right. So here was a, this one was an interesting one. I have not actually read this one yet, and I'm going to. Joe Kubert, the the unknown soldier. Number 242. Look at that. That is just fantastic. Red flowers. See, red flows the dawn. D-O-N. That's great. Look at that. That's beautiful. All right. Blazing a battle along the Russian front. He's shooting them some Nazis. That's good. Russians. That's good. Yeah. Well... When the Nazis did a, try to invade Russia and right. Hobbies. he failed he failed history. Only twice. Yeah. Silver Surfer. <laughs> failed history. 89. At least you know how to read comics. Uh Silver Surfer number 92. That's all you need in life. <laughs> the power cosmic. Yeah, that's great. Silver Surfer number 90. I don't know who Legacy is. He hasn't made a last impression, now, has he? But it says he's back. So he made an impression that, that I don't know who wrote this. The son of Captain Marvel. Oh, Marvel. Not Marvel. Oh no, Cap like Captain Marvel. Mm. Carol Danvers' son. Uh, that if it's not that'd Marvel, be that would well, that'd be weird. I think not. not yet. <laughs> All right, so number 93, Silver <laughs> Surfer, featuring the Human Torch. 
Um, because of course, if you look, Human Torch does not look happy. Very, very. And happy. Silver Surfer also doesn't look happy. Um, but he's got thighs like melons. Please ignore that. <laughs> Gallagher. <laughs> Silver Surfer, <laughs> number 94. Ant-Man is now part of the Fantastic Four as well. Uh, I think that was Scott Lang. Again. Stop messing with covers, man. Put cut put it. Put... Bags and boards. Bags and boards. All right. Silver Surfer number 97. Terra is that Terra? Look at he's back. And there's Nova. Herald of Galactus. Well, that's messing covers. with the light, yeah. Shiny covers. Shiny covers. All right, Doom 2099, number 23. I Look at how the laid over that snow tiger. Yeah. The nose comes down into here. That is really cool looking. That is really cool looking. All right, so can you tell me who did? John Francis Moore is the writer. Pat Broderick is a penciler. Very nice. All right. Doom twenty nine or Punisher twenty ninety nine, number thirteen. Um, my uh, my son has put him upside down, so he's made it interesting for me. We also see <laughs> Spider Man twenty ninety nine there uh, on the cover, and now we have Unlimited twenty ninety nine, Hulk twenty nine. What has happened to Hulk? Uh, he mixed with the lizard. He looks like he mixed with a lot of things. Jeepers. Well, what is the half life for, for radiation? Or um, what is his? Metal Scream. And then La Trima. La Trima? I don't know. Honestly, let me see. It's poison. Uh, don't like the art in this too much. It's okay. It's toxic. You'd have to like this. All right. Unlimited 2099, number two, featuring the Hulk 2099. Um, I would love if in 80 years Marvel brought all these comics back. <laughs> yeah, and they actually had to look like that. Yeah. Doom 2099, number 14. I see what you did there. Doom 2099, number 12. Not only did he put them upside down, but he's also put them out of order. <laughs> I did not do that. I literally, I, I stacked these. Oh, maybe they are in order. I don't know. Is that a celestial? Maybe. I actually kind of like this cover. Um, brought to you by John Moore and Pat Broderick. Huh. I thought it was Marvel Comics that did it. Doom twenty ninety nine number sixteen. He is trying to step up his joke game. It is not good. Doom 2099, number 17. And look at it. It's not a celestial. It's just a dude that looks like a celestial with a unibrow. Nice. It's just, he looks like a celestial. He's got a, he's got a major unibrow. Maybe that's a thing in 2099. Um, that fad better never take off. Doom 2099. <laughs> Space Showdown. Space Showdown. Doom 2099. Doom faces a T Rex. Doom. Some, some things never change. He played Ark. He's eaten. <laughs> he played Ark and lost. <laughs> he's going to have to respawn at his camp. Punisher 2099, number 14. Now we see why and where I meant he did things out of order because Punisher's back. Punisher is now back. Punisher 2099, number 15. Looks like he's in an electric chair. Got to say, distinctly less cool than our Punisher. Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, where's this? The skull doesn't look right here to me. And why is it covering his crotch? None of this. Wait a second. Looks. <laughs> doesn't that mean the skull's mouth is over this crotch? I, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> um, Punisher twenty ninety nine number sixteen. Um, Edward Scissorhands killed the Punisher's girlfriend. That sounds like a bad horror movie. That's, that's okay. Punisher grew old between one issue. Punisher twenty ninety nine number seventeen. Look at, is that the, if that's the Punisher? He's got gray hair now. 
That is distinctly more cool than the last it issue. Was, uh, it was better. That actually looks better. Um, the Secret Defenders. Number 13. Rhino? Rhino. So, Thanos, Super Scroll, Rhino, Nitro, and the Titanium Man. The Secret Defenders. Are the Secret Defenders. Now, here's... here's. I think that's supposed to be Thanos. He's got really short arms. And his head doesn't fit his body. Something happened to him. He's very unhealthy. He dusted one too many people. Ron Mars and Tom Grinberg. The snap took out half his arms. Secret Defenders number 14. Secret Defenders number 15. Look at that. Deadpool! Deadpool! And is that Luke Cage? Uh, I think so. I think, that, I think that's Luke Cage. And Dr. Druid. Dr. Druid. Okay. <sighs> An all why. new, all fresh team. And Secret Defenders. Number 16. Fighting Cadaver. Let's say that's a cool looking sword, too. Yeah, that looks cool. Ron Lim, Keith Aiken. Those are the names on the gravestones, just if you were wondering. Secret Defenders number 17. So why did they get rid of all the villains and then pop in? I don't know. I guess we'll have to read it. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, Secret Defenders um, number 21. Look at, we got <laughs> Spider-Woman and another sneeze and a, another flaming sword. Flaming swords, man. Flaming swords. More flaming. Flaming. Tom Brevoort. That like, explains a lot. All right. That's a <clears throat> X-Men 2099, number two. I don't know who any of those are. <laughs> <laughs> Give up. Uh, X-Men 2099, Skullfire. Sounds like a band name. Number seven. It is. Where's, yeah, where's my... Um, X-Men 2099, number 14. Yeah, that's pretty good. Where's my Bishop and Cable and other future X-Men? All right, so we're getting there. Thank you for staying. Oh, we picked up a lot of stuff, and we're really excited about it, and we're having fun. So hopefully you guys are having fun, too. And uh, this next one, we're, we're, almost, we're almost through all this. Um, and then... Um, I've got Jay's got some stuff sacks. yeah, that, that he wants to go through, and I'm going to let him do some talking because he's been really quiet and not really helping to me. <laughs> I, excuse me. So, Strange Tales. Look at that. Number 120. Ice Man and the Human Torch. Not in the greatest condition, but, man, it's a great-looking comic. Yeah. It's an old comic, too. I wonder if they're trying to rescue, like, the Titanic or something. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, just melt the ice boogie. Yeah, melt. Come on, Johnny. Yeah, Do could, it. <laughs> he could have. He could have saved everybody if he just melted it. Mm. If only Bobby Drake hadn't been slowing him down. Yeah, well, Bobby could have just redirected the ice, right? Morbius. So Morbius number 18. Um, this was the Midnight Suns line from Marvel. And we got uh, Vampire Machine Man in there, too, I believe. Vampires. Gregory Wright, Isaac Cordova. Morbius. Number 20. Morbius, number 21. I don't know if anybody is into vampire stuff. But this was a... Morbius is always a pretty cool character for me. Um... Morbius number 22. Uh, spider maybe behind him. Look at that. That's pretty cool looking. Morbius number 19. Um, again, he has put things out of order for us. Just so we keep us guessing. Stay frosty. Morbius number 23. 
more Spider-Man. Like, what's Spider-Man doing in the background? He's just like, hey, what's going on over there? <sighs> no, he's a flying man. Then we have Thor, number 128. Look at that. Thor and... Hercules. 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 Fighting Pluto. So the god of thunder and the son of Zeus. Fighting a planet. Action Comics number 440. Another one of those old ones. Look at his mom and dad are really upset with him. So you're, no, you're no son of mine. Yeah. Obviously he did not do something right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll do the dishes next time. All right. Again, this is one I don't know much about. Popeye. 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 Number two. I know who Popeye is. Yeah, um, 1988. So Popeye in this looks really young. Oh, yeah. So maybe it's Popeye's kid. Batman and the Outsiders, number 11. I don't know if anybody is reading uh, Brian Hill's Batman and the Outsiders right now. It's been really good. Um, but here, original. Um, here is a, the kick, I've never heard of this, the Kickers, Kickers Incorporated, number two, from the U new universe, the Star Brains from the new universe. Do you remember when, oh, you don't remember, because Marvel tried to <laughs> launch a new universe, and it was kind of pivoted around Star Brand. I don't know if you remember who Star Brand is, um, but this was back in the 80s, Kickers Incorporated, I don't know what that is. All right, so here's a uh, Secret Weapons. Valiant. Um, Poe Dameron. Poe Dameron. Poe Dameron number two. Good old Poe. Iron Man number 187. It's old school. That is, yeah. 1984, I think. Iron Man 189. Now, what if your villain's name was Termite? If I was made out of wood, I'd be scared. The termite versus the Iron Man. <laughs> oh, what I want to see is Termite versus the Tick. <laughs> Danny O'Neill and Luke McDonald. Okay. Guys, um, that probably wasn't a great idea. Captain America, number 307. <laughs> Think about this. Ooh, am I? So we see uh, Nomad, Captain America and Nomad. So I think it looks like Nomad. Or maybe the Minic. Maniacal Menace of Madcap. But wait, there's more. Mad he really Madcap. Has to know. Thanks, Ethan, for following up on my joke. Captain yep. America, number 309. Yeah, that's also Madcap. And that's Madcap. That, I think, is no bad. I don't remember. There are so many mads. All right. And then we have uh, another unknown soldier. I didn't touch anything. Number 218. Um, yeah, as you can see, Hitler does not like the Unknown Soldier. Pointing fingers. Because Ooh. he's an American hero, and he's going to get him. Right. Um, I, man, you made these all out of order. I didn't touch anything past... Unknown oh. Soldier, number 219. Here lies the unknown soldier. Now that I have killed you, I shall steal his face. Wait, how? If no one knows his face. Unknown soldier, 240. Thor? Is that Thor? No, it's DC. It can't be Thor. The dude's got a big hammer, and he's going after the unknown soldier. Obviously, he didn't die. Then we got Captain America and the Falcon, number 222. Fighting Abraham Lincoln. Fighting Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> the monumental menace. Four score. We got Sergeant Fury and the Halley Commandos. Oh, yeah. 28. 
Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos, number 37. Oh, look at it. I wonder if Sergeant Fury knew the Unknown Soldier. Probably. I wonder if they were buddies. Except Sergeant Fury's Marvel. They were in the same war together. Mm -hmm. Different, they different universes. They would have met. Sergeant Fury, look at That dude could punch wood. <laughs> so can Termite. <laughs> Maybe he became Termite. Uh, uh, Sergeant Fury, number 41. Look at that. The Howlers versus the Blitzers. All right. Then we have another What If comic, number 13. What If Conan walked the earth today? Pretty cool. Yeah. He would have liked down with that. What is this magic that you do? Daredevil, number 44. The Man Without Fear. Uh, Green Lantern, number... 40? Yeah. Green Lantern number 40. So we have Green Lantern versus Green Lantern. Dun, 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 dun. Every video. All right. Um, that one's different. I'm sorry. You can't call that. It's one. a new one for live stream. G.I. Yeah. Joe. Um, I believe The Rock was in this video or in this comic. Yeah, because I guess it's based off the movie, right? So, yeah. Yeah. That's The Rock. Look okay, at He's in a comic. Captain America, um, called White, number four. I don't, I don't know if that's the title or the comic title or the title of this. I don't know. Another G.I. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad you put it. Put these all out of I order. I didn't touch any of those. G.I. Yeah, Joe, number I 12. Promise. Cobra Commander. Co Cobra, is that a Cobra hugging a girl or is she dead? I don't know what's going on there. All of the above. G.I. Yeah, Joe? Not enough Transformers. Number 11. And then X-Men Classic, number 60. Classic. That's classic. Look at this, the Star Jammers. They're, look at that, they're fighting the aliens. You remember what the aliens are called? Mm, Star sure Star. are. No. I forgot the name of them. I think it's the Wraith. I don't know. They want to conquer Earth. Classes, but I, again, love this trade dress. That's good. I think that's all of his. That's all of the stuff I got that I have for this live stream. Um, again, if you saw anything that interests you, let us know. Um, you know, DM us, what, whatever. You, most of them are okay. I just want to save them from obscurity. Some of them are from my key issues. So now Jay has got some that he picked up. Um, he's not pro, as prolific. As I am in my purchasing, um, that's all about that. Pr money. Probably because he makes he a, a lot list. less money than I do, so you can only afford what you can afford. But get what you can, keep it, and keep it, keep it safe. Wait, seven dollars or seven comics? This is, yeah, that both. All right, go ahead, show us, <laughs> show us what you got there, Jay. All right, so I'm covering Executioner song. Um, however, I was missing a couple issues in the arc, and I've got all of them now. So yeah. I don't have to order them online. That's about time. Um, yeah, this this first one is basic is X Factor X Factor eighty four, um, which if you can't see it, you won't be able to see me. All right, I'll hold my fire. Okay. X Factor. Look at that strong yeah. guy. What is his name? Guido. That's his first name. Yeah, Guido. And look at Shatterstar, Havoc. Is that Rian? Uh, yeah, like Wolf, Wolf Spain. Spain right? Wolf Spain is his her title, and I figured this out by reading the comics. I had it mixed up in my video. The yellow lady there, yeah, that is Pharaoh. That's Pharaoh, and this, this is, is Rain, Rain, also known as Wolf Spain. Wolf Spain. And then there's um, Madrox is in there. Warpath is in there. Petro, yeah, Quicksilver. Quicksilver is there. And it's, who's this? Uh, Warpath. Warpath. Uh, nice. Okay, issue way too dark. Dark? Well, it was like the like color is too dark. The color is way too dark. Yeah. Okay. It's just, I mean, if you want to take a look, I, if you watched my videos, you would have seen some of the panels. I like that. I like muted color sometimes. When when a series is toned to be dark, that works for me. Yeah, but this is the X Men. 
Well, no, this is not the X Men. This is X Force X Factor. X Men X Force X Factor. All right, X Force. It's basically another fight scene. I I read this today. A lots of great battles. Basically, a lot of the same people, but also the X Men. So you have Beast, who wasn't with them at the time. Wolverine, Gambit, Psylocke, Rogue, other people. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, boom, boom. Uh, hey, this this will be in my next video. Be ready for that. X Factor <sighs> number eighty-two. Haven't read this one yet. Again, I'm about to. Or eighty-five. Uh, Cable now, this, this is fighting cover, Bishop. This cover is really dark. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm not a. I mean, I like what they're doing with the cover in a sense of the fight, but I'm not a big fan of this art. It's another X Factor comic, so I'm expecting it to be very dark again, and that's that's going to be disappointing because this is this should be a cool thing where it's Bishop and Wolverine fighting Cable. I want to see that cool because Cable and Bishop both have light light ability. <laughs> yes. Um, but again, this comic takes place in the nighttime, so yeah. All in dark. Yeah. All dark. Strife. Uh, X Force. Number 17. Yeah. Strife knocking uh, down Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Granted, uh, Apocalypse, uh, again, watch the next video. This doesn't look that dark. Um, uh, it, it's X Force. X Force is a different X -Force run. X Force is light and airy. Yeah. X Factor is dark, dark and gritty. Right, and then, um, and then gritty. look at I love the trade dress. Domino. Yeah. Back with Domino was cool. Mm -hmm. Domino's not that cool anymore. She was pretty cool in the movie, but. Yeah, very nice. All right. Ironically, X Force is like the government agents, and X Force are the people trying to run away, and they're like the the renegades, and like you think the X Force would be darker, but no. X Factor. Again, Number another 86. dark cover. Another dark. Really, um, know, I'm just not a fan of this art. But look, I am excited. Apocalypse. I'm excited to read this comic. It book. looks like Apocalypse and Archangel are going crazy. Are, are made it with the Joker. Yeah. Like the Joker crossed over and like. And projected them with the serum, and it's Apocalypse who laughed, and Archangel who laughed, and, <laughs> and Professor X and who laughed. <laughs> Professor X looks like he's turning into Mojo. Uh, he looks like he's becoming Mojo. Look no, Mojo is kind of technical. It's just vomit. Uh, so right. uh, this is the last part of the execution of the song. X Force number eighteen that I that I picked up. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. Spoilers. No spoilers. But that you, that is all that is all spoilers right yeah, there. Gosh, you'd have to watch the review. <laughs> or go buy it yourself. Or buy and and buy it yourself. Nah. Save a comic. All right. Doctor Strange number 72. Yeah. I'm an old school Doctor Strange fan. So seeing this, I looked yeah. it up. Is that Cthulhu? Probably. Or Yogg-Saron? Um and, and look at it's got a, a girl in the, his tentacles. By the way, th like there were only four Doctor Strange comics at, at the whole the whole flea market, and three of them were modern. So it's like somebody mm -hmm. somebody's buying up all the Doctor mm -hmm. Strange. Maybe there's another movie coming out, and you don't know it, and they're, they're getting ready to. They're, de speculate. they're definitely there. Definitely is another movie. Oh, uh, that's just for me. All right, this was the last one that came up. It was in the box. I don't know what this is. This looks like something that came out of a cereal package. Probably. Justice <laughs> League. Uh, Sinister Imitation. It's, you know, yeah. Dan Jurgens. So, that looks really kind of cool. Um, it's got the old school Justice League on there. And if you look on the back. Collect all four. four. All four covers. We have this one. So, we're going to have to go on a mission to find the other to three. Correct all four. Can, can we turn can we turn them them in for a five dollar coupon for oh. like lucky charms? Oh, oh, what did it come in? <laughs> we're gonna have to do some Google um, to figure that out. That that is our new goal now. <laughs> if anybody on Twitter or YouTube can uh, reply in the comments what that is, where it came from, or what cereal company do you have it? it? Right, do you have one? <laughs> we'll, we'll I, maybe I'll trade you. I got, I got some, I got some cash moolah. Uh, no, no, I probably wouldn't buy any. But um, <laughs> just buy a box. <laughs> just, I'll just buy the. Can I get some old cereal you might have in the? 
All right, so uh, that that is it. That is our live stream. We have Ooh. gone through all the comments that we picked up at the flea market, and then uh, I did pick up a box of comics off Facebook Marketplace. Dude smelled like wacky weed. It was really bad, but I got the comics, and then I left. Um, so got some good stuff. I got some stuff that we just kind of rescued. I like I like doing this. I like bringing comics and just you know out of the box, just sitting there doing nothing and bring them back. And I end up having just closets full of comics. So but that's okay because I'm saving them from obscurity. I like old comics. I like reading old comics. And what we do on our channel is review old story arcs, sometimes some new stuff, but review old story arcs that you may not have read before. Maybe you only had a couple issues of it, and you wanted to know what this whole thing was about. What was that story arc about? And we cover that whole story arc, and we present it to you in a, a nice, easy way to understand with some dad jokes and some wor jokes. worse dad jokes and even worse dad jokes because that's that's, a joke. that's our level of humor. Um, but we I just love comics joking. and we love sharing it with people. And again, like we said on our last li live stream, we want to provide a place that's like an old school comic shop where we can actually Jeepers. It's, it's, it sorry. is rock that I'm not Jeepers. <laughs> Jeepers, creepers. The whole table's rocking. But provide like an old school comic shop where we were we able to have the conversation about comics, about stories about you know, the things that we enjoyed, you know, who would win between Batman and the Midnighter or yeah. Colossus and Dr. Doom, you know, that kind of stuff was fun. What'd be cool is if one day we could buy like a, a, a lot and they could make an old school comic shop. Yeah. We have enough. Yeah. Let's yeah. do this. Well, yeah. Well, we have enough comics to provide. <laughs> to prov for but, a little bit, for a good little bit. And that to me, it would be a great place to go somewhere. You can go have coffee, sit and talk about comics just chat for a while, you know, not, but I doubt it would make much of my, honestly. I mean, it'd just have to be a place that you just hang out. I mean, but to me, it's fun. I like talking comics. I like talking, you know, what we read, look at the writers, the artists. I want to, some of these things really got me excited about reading them and hopefully maybe got you, some of you guys excited about reading them. Again, if you saw something that really interests you, let us know, just uh, shoot us a comment. Send us a DM on Twitter. This, we're Diving Longbox on Twitter. We're on Facebook. You know, we're on Instagram. You know, hit us up anywhere and just talk about comics. We'll be glad to, to have a conversation with you about it. And uh, again, we'll have some more uh, reviews up this week. We're going to be continuing. Yep. What's uh, yours? Uh, execution song uh, issues three and four of the art. And I will be continuing Extreme X Men. Uh, look at Sage. All right. So we will be continuing that that uh, those two reviews as well, um, and uh, thank you for joining us here on our live stream, our second only second live stream ever, and we're going to be doing more of these and more of the other ones where we discuss the total review at the end. Um, I thank you guys for joining me. That was J. Yep. That was E. Z. I am D. And I am glad that you all joined us, uh, those that could, and have a good day, and we'll see you next time here in the live box. Woo! Cereal. It's not done. <laughs> <laughs>